How about a, a brand new uh, company or a brand new fund? Would would it not be appropriate for for a new fund to to do go with the REIT route? REIT or not, it's not really the question. It's really, I mean, legally legally speaking, we can set it up for a brand new fund. It's really a, a question of uh, cost efficiency. It, it it can be kind of expensive to start fresh um, because of the compliance and the ongoing maintenance. So we tell clients, look, you know, if you're at thirty, if you're at under thirty million, it may not be the right time. You may not have enough investors. You also may not have enough um, enough of a cushion to sustain to sustain the cost. That's why I say thirty, fifty million dollars when most clients start thinking about doing it. But lately, even for new funds, what we've been seeing is we've been adding the option to, and that gives them the power to add this to their fund later without going to their investors for a vote. And for the investors to win anyway, so it doesn't really change their day to day. It doesn't change their risk profile. It only adds their tax benefits. So usually, it's no more, a no-brainer for the investor. So, a fund manager that's going to implement the REIT, do they just send out a notice to all their investors and say, "Hey, we're converting you to a REIT, and you're going to have all this tax benefit"? And and in and that sub-REIT structure, typically mm-hmm. yes. The framework's already built. If they're converting the existing fund and that, and that LLC or that LP into a REIT structure where they're changing the tax status, then that would technically, typically, depending on the operating agreement or the LP agreement, call for a vote. So it depends on the situation. But I would say in most circumstances, they're just going to say, guys, here's the notice, here's what's going on, and here's why we're doing it. And I don't know a single investor who would say no to that 20% deduction. So. Sure.